Welcome back, Algebra 2A, and welcome to another thrilling lesson here. Graphing systems of linear inequalities. It just builds off of, essentially, the last lesson. Uh, the only different thing today is now we are going to be doing inequalities with graphing. Okay. Now, the first thing before we dive into these graphs, it's important to note um, that we're going to have to remember some things here. First off, if you have a greater than or less than sign, strictly, you're going to use a dashed line to connect your graphs. Dash, 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 dash. If you have a greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you're going to use a solid line. And also, it could be useful to get some colors because we have to do some shading. All right, we're going to pull out your art skills today. Okay. Um, so, sketch the solution to each system of inequalities. All right, um, this is, again, get some colors out, and it can be helpful to use those. So, y is greater than or equal to negative one-thirds x plus three. First, just focus on graphing the negative one-thirds x plus three. That's up three. That's down one over three. Now, a solid or a dashed line. This is going to be a solid line uh, because we have the equal to, okay? So the best you can, I'm still just going to use a dark line here, um, but the best you can connect the points, okay? Now, the last bit is to decide where to shade, okay? Where to shade and the question is should I shade above or should I shade below the line okay um, there's a little trick if it's solved for y and it must be solved for y then greater than will mean above but it has to be solved for y okay has to be solved for y has to um, in this case we'll shade above the line I'll show you another way to determine where to shade. Um, but as long as it's solved for y, that's a nice little trick. Okay, so another little thing. So solve for y. Does not quite work for standard form. Okay, next graph. Let's do it in pink. Um, down two. And we're going up four. One, two, three, four. And over three. One, two, three. So yes, they intersect there. Um, that's not in particular the only solution. There's actually many, many, many solutions, and that is where the shading is going to meet. Okay, now similarly, okay, if you're solve for y, then less than is going to mean below. Um, but again, you have to be solved for y. Okay, below this graph is going to be everything down here. Now that's fine and dandy, but really the only true solutions are where both things meet. So right in that section are the only solutions, okay? So really you're just coloring and determining where things meet. If, as you do these, you want to erase, then, your extra shading, okay, you can certainly do that. Um, but at least just be careful. Use different um, cross hatches, so to speak. That way you can determine where the shading is at the end. Okay, just be very specific when you submit assignments as to where the final solutions are. Okay, so let's look at another example here. Um, so we'll look at this first graph. First, let's decide solid or dashed line. Well, there's no equal to, so it's going to be dashed. Okay, we're solved for y, so we also know if it's greater than, we're going to shade above. You can decide that first. Um, negative 1, we're going to go down 3 and to the right 2. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Um, dash line, so do your best to connect everything. And there's that one. 
Okay, now shading above. So above, I'll use blue, would be everything on this side of the graph. Okay, let's use red for the other one. Up one, and slope of negative one half. Down one, over two, or up one to the right or to the left. Another dashed line. So I didn't write these things out first, but again, it's going to be dashed because there's no equal to. And once again, above since it's greater than. So let's see what we have here. Okay. Now notice where the true solutions, so to speak, are. If you want to take another color or just kind of highlight those, if you have a highlighter at home, that could be very useful for you. Um, but that essentially is where they are. In the orange where things are double crossed. Lots of colors going on. But that's what makes it fun. So again, you can either erase the other stuff but definitely make sure that you have where everything's crossed over as your solutions. Okay. Um, same idea with these problems, only I'm going to show you another little way to solve. So you can't just decide right away. So this may not necessarily be above because um, it's not solved for Y. You could certainly solve it for Y, but I will still show you um, another way to do it. Now, another thing to remember, x is less than or equal to 6. That's a vertical line. What else do we know about it? It's going to be solid. And I want to shade in numbers that are less, less than 6. So I want to be sure to shade things like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all in the x's. Uh, so let's just take a look at what this will look like graphically. Um, x less than or equal to 6. First, let's graph that there. Solid line in green. Now, the numbers I want to shade are is any x value that's less than 6. Well, let's just kind of dot them out. 5 is less than 6. 4 is less than 6. 3, 2, 1, everything. So that means you want to shade to the left or almost where the arrow's pointing of 6. Okay. This next one, let's let's solve it for y. That can be helpful. Okay, so negative 6y um, is greater than negative 7x um, plus 24. Now we need to remember some things. If we divide by negative six, what's that going to do to my sign? If you said that's going to change it, Mr. D, then you're absolutely right. Um, seven six um, minus four x. So that's why you can't right off the bat just say, oh, it's going to be above. You have to solve it for y. Um, so we're going to go down four. Up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, over 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, solid or dashed line? It's going to be dashed. And these are all things you can decide either before or as you go. Now in this step, since we're solved for y, we know it'll be below, okay? And then decide where everything meets is happy, happy, happy. A nice little triangle there. Okay. Um, let me just show you an extra little way to decide where to shade. Okay. So where do you shade? This is just an extra little tip. Um, I call it the test point.
and you basically look at one graph at a time. So I'm going to focus on the 7x plus 6y minus 6y, sorry, um, is greater than 24. After I graph that, if you pick any point, so pick a point that's not on the graph, typically 0, 0, or not on the graph. So pick 0, 0, or point not on the graph. If I substitute 0 in for x and 0 in for y, I'm asking myself, is that a true statement? So is 0 minus 0, 7 times 0 is 0, minus 0, is 0 greater than 24? No, it's not. So that means don't shade in that point. So if you notice on the graph, I'm going to put it in pink here, here is 0, 0, and we're referencing our blue graph. I don't want to shade 0, 0 or really anything else on this side. I don't want to shade that. I can only shade the other side. Likewise, if you pick a point over here in the blue, you'll find that it does work. So that's a test point method. It can always help you decide where to shade. Okay, let's just finish up here with number four. Gonna solve for y. Um, so y, uh, 2y, is less than or equal to negative 5x uh, plus 16, which then becomes y is less than or equal to negative 5 halves x um, plus 8. It's gonna be solid and below, so up eight, I'm gonna go down five, one, two, three, four, five, over two, one, two, connect with a solid line, and we should shade above, above. If you're not confident in your shading, pick that test point. Okay, test point, TP, not toilet paper. Um, try out zero, zero, it's not on the graph. So is five times zero plus two times zero uh, less than or equal to 16? Well, zero is less than or equal to um, 16. All right, so that means we actually want to shade. Um, actually, I shaded above, what am I doing? I want to shade below, it's a good thing I did. The test point, okay? I do want to include 0, 0, Mr. D. Well, if you got that, hopefully you watched the whole way through. We do want to shade below. I even wrote it for myself and everything. So mental things like that happen. Okay, there we go. A little better. Um, for the last one here, okay, 5x plus 2y. Let's see if we can finish it out here. Um, that would be 2y is less than negative 5x plus 4. Um, y is less than negative 5 halves x plus 2. Let's see if I can pay attention to myself this time. It's going to be below and dashed. So up to and negative 5, 1, two, three, four, five, over two, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two. Hey, they have the same slope. This one is dashed. And below, so I'm going to then shade on this side. Kind of hard to see with so many colors and dashes and everything but that's where it would be. So these particular solutions. Um, again, you could test out zero, zero. Yeah, see, it is shaded. Um, and that's just is five times zero plus two times zero less than four. That's true, so I want to shade there. 
Um, a last little tidbit of info, if there is no intersection of shading, okay, that just means no solution. So say you graph two things, one is shaded up down here, another is shaded up here, just like before. That just means no solution. So great job, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with my little mistakes. And mistakes are fine again. Just make sure you check your answers and go back through. And good luck with those graphs.